Natalia gets a new release from Diamond. Here's your look at the new Diamond Select Marvel Premiere Collection Black Widow Resin Statue. Raised from an early age in the top secret Red Room program, Natasha Romanoff was trained to be the Black Widow, a dangerous super spy and mastering the arts of espionage, subversion, and combat. She ultimately defected from her original keepers, instead seeking to right the wrongs of her past by joining the covert intelligence agency SHIELD. Now, as a member of the Heroic Avengers, Black Widow uses her unequaled skills to protect the innocent. This resin statue of Black Widow is based on his appearance in Marvel Comics and features detailed sculpting and paint applications. It measures approximately 10 and a half inches tall and is limited to only 3,000 pieces. It includes a certificate of authenticity. Before we get a closer look at the Black Widow resin statue, I'd like to first thank the folks over at Diamond Select, who did make this review possible by providing the sample of Black Widow that we're going to have a look at in this video. Following to that, I'm going to bring in my little disc of measurement here. I'm going to grab the tape measure just to see how tall Natasha Romanoff stands. Taking it right to the very top of her head being the highest point after all, the, the statue in this case stands 10 inches in height, or she's roughly about 25 and a half centimeters tall. Statues like this tend to come included with certificate of authenticities, and Black Widow is no exception. To come included with this resin statue, you do get, in fact, a certificate of authenticity, indicating, yes, first of all, the picture of what the statue is going to look like to the far left. To the far right, it says this is an authentic Diamond Select Toys Premier Collection Black Widow resin statue, which didn't mention at the beginning of this video was sculpted by James Marsano and designed by Joe Allard. Normally, this would have been the case where the number out of the limited 3,000 run would have been printed there, but this is probably an artist proof, and likely why the reasoning why that was zeroed out or left blank. Backside is completely blank, but it is a card stock card, and of course, I'd like to display generally when it comes to displaying these on my shelf. I always like to put the certificate of authenticity behind it. Matching to that, going ahead and picking the statue up carefully. After all, it's got a little bit more weight and likelihood of being broken a little more easier than their gallery statues. On the underside of the display base, not only are we treated to four cornered rubberized feet to, of course, preventing scratching on surfaces. Underneath here would also be normally the number out of the 3,000 copies. But again, like the certificate of authenticity, they have left it blank, leading me more to believe that this is actually an artist-proof resin statue, not one of the 3,000 that are going to be worldwide distributed. Suppose we could stick with stands for the time being. Natasha is running what seems to be a cross pavement. It's got several cracks that I'm guessing is not from her footfall. You can see that there's several exploding effects all around her as well that's been done using the same resin, although it's been done here clear. You can see as well, there's a few little boulders. The whole idea, it looks like this is impacted explosions, blasting away the concrete as she's running through the streets. It's a nice touch. Uh, when I did, however, take this out of the bag, I couldn't help but notice this tiny little fragment shard was left in the bag. I'm looking all around and I don't see a place where it would have been broken. Oh, right, probably on the end here, right there. One of the difficult times of getting these resin pieces, getting them, first of all, delivered to you, and then second, to remove them from the bag safe. I think this was already broken by the time this arrived to my doorstep. I could probably could glue that, glue that right in place. But at least it's in a small enough area that, I mean, for looking at it, I didn't even notice it right away. I do, again, like the detailing that they've done to the surface here. Again, it makes for a very heavy display base. I do like the way that they have the little exploding effects. Uh, something also, too, to mention is the way they've transitioned. They've airbrushed it kind of more of a smokier section of the resin. And it gets progressively clearer, as we would imagine, like these boulders are just floating in the air by themselves, again, as the impact is hitting it. As we move certainly up the statue here, you can certainly see as well that Black Widow primarily is all done here in black, matching the colors of the caution that she has in the comics. Getting a closer look at her head sculpt. I do like her face except for one thing, to be honest completely. I mean, I don't know if I like her mouth. It looks actually pretty good from the side. I think actually in this case, I would almost be inclined to display the statue sideways than having it straight on. I mean, the, the eyes look okay. The nose also doesn't do a too bad of a job. 
but there's something about the way they've got the mouth sculpted so close to, to, to one another. I almost feel like in this case, maybe there was a little bit of missed paint down below in the bottom lip. It really does certainly seem like the smaller lip kind of gives her a weird look, almost as if she's sucking something sour, like a lemon candy. Again, when you see it from this side, it's not so bad, leading me to believe that perhaps, again, while the paint isn't so bad on this side, it looks like it was likely left off here on the bottom lip on this side of her face. It looks a little jarring. And like I said, to look at this, it actually looks a little bit better from this side than it does this side here. The eyes are quite beautifully sculpted and painted. They've added only just a minimal amount of paint here just for the eyebrow section. It's just one shade darker than the skin tone that she has. I do like the shape of her face as well. And in addition to that, I actually think the hair is nicely sculpted too. It's not a solid red either. It seems to have almost more of a little bit of an auburn coloring, and then mostly it's just brown. The hair is nicely sculpted, I have to say. Now, she is posed in such a way that I'm guessing she's probably going to be firing one of her gauntlets from, of course, around her, around her wrist. This has been the only other place that's on the figure that's a little bit differently colored. Most, again, of the body, as you can see here, is all done into the black plastic or black resin. So when you get opportunities like this that have the gold on the gauntlets, I'm glad to see that they took it. Of course, one of the other things as well for Black Widow is not only the fact that she does have a zipper. Of course, she has to put on the costume somehow. And they've added just a single stream of silver running down the front of her torso. There's a little ringlet there as well, and of course, where she'd be able to unzip herself. And then just down below that, the point I really wanted to make first before stopping for her zipper... Well, actually, she does have, again, that little belt. It always reminded me of Julie Newmar's Catwoman from Batman, just the way it sort of is lopsided down the side of her waist here. And, of course, she has the very familiar Black Widow logo there in the middle of her, bat of her belt. Again, as we spin this around, you can see there's some really nice detailing done here. The material looks very stretched across her body. You can see there's some additional seam lines that they've added in there as well. So really, while the statue does have and make use of a lot of black in this case, at least the black has an opportunity to shine just because they've added some additional sculpting to it as well. You can see like there's some nice little panel lines down the front of her torso, some additional panel lines and stretched areas there across her arms. So nothing really is left untouched, at least when it comes to the sculpting on this statue. And of course, one other thing we didn't mention here yet on the statue is the fact that she has one single pistol in her hand. The other pistol, again, is absent here. She's only got just the extended fist, but I would imagine she's probably going to be firing something off from the gauntlets here. And then the other one, of course, is, is going to be carrying the pistol just in case. Nice additional silver has been added on there as well, so it's not simply just the black, because I think if you had the pistol black and then you have her hand black, and then you have so much of the black in the costume, I think it would be almost too much. It's nice to see that they actually did add some additional silver. It does help to break things up rather nicely. Overall, it's a good-looking statue. Uh, again, for mine at least, I would have to point out to the fact that like, it just it seems to me at least that the lower lip got left off a little bit of extra paint. It looks a little bit better on this side. It looks a little less on this side. Other than that, and I would only imagine that that's because this is an artist proof, she makes for a really nice-looking statue. This is also one of those cases also as well that Diamond Select put a running pose in their characters. So when you are putting the statue on display, she doesn't seem as staction as she obviously would be, being the fact that she has no articulation to speak of. But I do like the fact that they gave her a nice little running pose, putting the exploding effects around it. While it could be dangerous to try to remove out of the bag and keep everything still intact, again, I have to go back to the fact I did have one missing piece broken off here. Uh, other than that, I mean, it does make for a really nice showpiece. It's something I think I, in this case, I'd probably have to display her sideways. I think really having a looking, just spinning it like this. Yeah, maybe that this side right here is probably the better of the two. I don't know if I would have the statue displayed front on. For me, at least. I would probably just slightly turn it just off to the side so you get the full effect of the blast effects around the base. And it also, in my case, hides and conceals a little bit of left off paint that she has on her lower lip. Other than that, like I said, it's a really nice statue from the folks over at Diamond Select. A bit bummed that the bottom of Black Widow's display base had to be broken like that, but at least it was a small enough piece that I didn't even know right away what part it was broken off. Sure enough, it's just this part right now that's spinning around the rotisserie while you, you saw, already saw it in the review. One of the problems that you have to face, or what gets faced with dealing with a resin statue, is the more fragile nature of it. It makes for a higher quality, heavier feeling statue when you're putting it on a shelf, but of course, you're going to have to be a lot more careful when there's things that could be potentially broken. I mean, just to look at Black Widow, the, the back of her hair here, the way they've got the individual strands and groupings of hair sort of spiraling off like that. Any one of those could be strong contenders for 
breakage. So if you ever decide that you want to change around your statue collection and maybe change out Black Widow here with another one of Diamond Select's marvelous looking statues, just be careful again, putting the bag around this. That unfortunately, if you're not too careful, even just putting the bag across those shards, the little spikes down below on the display base, if any one of them snag against the plastic and you pull the bag down, you're probably just going to break another one off too. So just be careful. And of course, when it always comes to these statues like this, it would probably be best advised to probably pick them up at a local comic book store. Not only are you supporting the local stores because they need, they need customers like you to be coming in and keeping their businesses going, especially during these hard times. But so it's probably a good idea too, especially with resin statues, to be getting them locally where perhaps you could even open up the boxes on the premises so that you and the store owner can actually inspect the statue before you get it home. Because from his standpoint, he also doesn't want you to be taking home a statue, breaking it, and then taking it back later and saying, yeah, I, I opened up this box and this part was broken off. And then, of course, he would have to replace it and find the means to return it back to the company. Now, it's always probably a good idea. And I would always say myself, when it comes to picking up resin statues, I generally like to pick them up at local comic book stores for those two reasons keeping the businesses active and also getting the chance to inspect this on hand so that you're not ordering it online, you're getting it to your doorstep, you're opening it up and now you realize you've got a partially broken statue. But a nice looking Black Widow nonetheless. I, I do like the way that she's kept to more her comic roots. Again, the coloring of the lower lip is a little off jarring for me just because when you're looking at it straight on, it definitely, it does seem like the lower lip hasn't been fully painted. But again, this is was an artist proof, so I would imagine the ones that are probably going to be circulating around of that limited 3,000 copy worldwide number, I would imagine probably the lips are going to be slightly different. If you have picked up this statue for yourself, do let me know down below in the comments section if you had a similar issue with the lips. In the meantime, though, I'd like to thank the folks over at Diamond Select that did provide the sample of the premier collection Black Widow resin statue that we could have a look at in this video. If you are new here and you, first of all, enjoyed this video, hit it with a like. If you're loving the content that you're seeing here regularly and you haven't had yet the chance to do so, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Turn on as well that, that bell notification. Yes, it's always the bell notification, but it keeps you in the know. It keeps you getting those 411 friendly reminders whenever new videos are popping up. Speaking of which as well, popping up at the very end of this video will be a playlist for Diamond Select. If you would like to go back and have a look at some of the other premier collection resin statues I've had a look at, some of the other gallery statues I've had a look at, or just Diamond Select in general, the playlist will cover off everything, all three of those things. Keep your peepers peeled because while we have certainly wrapped up the review for the Black Widow resin statue, there is definitely going to be a lot more videos coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.